Hey, what's up guys? Colin here from Lucid Energy Arts, and I wanted to do a review of Locke Kelly and his work. I recently went to a three-day retreat for the weekend up in New York at the Omega Institute. And while I've worked with Locke for six or so years and uh, been to a couple of his other retreats, this one was incredibly profound and super transformational. It was orders of magnitude more than I had expected or hoped. So I actually just recorded a short well, 15 minute or so review immediately after leaving the retreat with my friend Jason, who also attended with me. So I'll play that here in a moment. Just so you know, I'm putting some links in the description for Locke's website and also a couple of his books that you can order by following the links there. And I uh, hope you enjoy this. Definitely check out his work. It has been really phenomenal in helping me to embody a state of open-hearted awareness uh, and able to actually work and move and live from this space and not just be, you know, in a meditative trance or something. So in that respect, I owe him a uh, great thanks and appreciation. And so here's the review. Enjoy. It got cut off at the end, just so you know. The phone kind of dropped and uh, yeah, so is what it is, but it's plenty to give you an insight into what we experienced and how it has really helped us. All right, so enjoy, talk to you soon. Oh, like, subscribe, comment. Here we are, we are leaving the grounds of the Omega Center, casually, effortlessly. After attending the weekend retreat here with Locke Kelly, practicing Glimpse meditation, effortless mindfulness, working with IFS in conjunction with a non-dual paradigm or aware space. And it has been remarkable. Beyond my expectations by far, and I've already worked with Locke for a number of years, so I was expecting a good amount, but it was uh, phenomenal. Got my buddy Jason here, flew in from Texas to join me on this retreat. And uh, yeah, share a little bit about your experience. Yeah, I mean, I had honestly come with no expectation um, outside of maybe I would learn, you know, be guided by Locke in his own words and energy through, you know, the glimpses. But uh, <laughs> uh, we did that, but went so deep. You know, and then applied that. When you say went so deep. Could you elaborate? Yeah. Mm. What do you mean by that? Um, well, you know, got out of the thinker. Okay. That's and the first move. First move. Sunk down, you know, into the body. Slowly, and you know, became down into the heart, heart center, and then from that space, <clears throat> so much is available, infinite. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I did. It was, <laughs> it was days of, days of residing there, healing. This is a great space, has awesome energy, uh, beautiful people, felt very welcome. Um, yeah, and again, abiding in the space and marinating in the practice as we did, just kind of very naturally, even, you know, in between sessions, just staying in that space and feeling connected to everything and yet not connected to so much of the everyday kind of got to figure this out, what am I doing next, kind of, you know, am I on track, am I off track, what needs to change, mindset. Yeah, yeah stopping the manager upstairs, right? <laughs> Which, uh, I mean, days of not, of quieting him, her. Them. 
them. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, realizing what that's like and knowing that it's actually the space you should be operating from. And then just residing there more and more and more and more. Realizing there is no other real way. And then the main thing for me, which I came intending to um, integrate, let's say, was in the way that I was using the practices up until this point was largely kind of like the way that you use an app on your phone. It's like when you want to use that app, you scroll to that screen, you hit that app, you open it up and use it for the time that you're using it, and then you put it away and you go back to whatever else you're doing. Whereas I wanted to make a deeper, more essential transformation and shift into not using it as an app, but making it the operating system so that I could actually not just chill out and be in spacious awareness and feel my heart center and feel like I'm, you know, embodied in things, but learn how to act, do, and show up in the world in a way that is incredibly effective and dynamic and free. And so it definitely feels like that is getting anchored in. I mean, that's been my experience all this weekend. And again, of course, you know, the, the stepping back into the external world will certainly provide many opportunities to practice. <laughs> but yeah, I would say I got definitely got that intention met and a whole lot more. Yeah. I mean, just release after release after release, integration, released new, you know, recouped energy, highlights a new area, just kind of like a circle there for me for all of Saturday that culminated then late at night with our, <laughs> you know, work further and just, uh, I would say that one of the things that's been amazing about this retreat and about doing the practice in the way that we you know, have been cultivating and, and uh, training in this kind of new procedural protocol is that it's fun, it's enjoyable. Like even working with these very dark parts, let's say of the psyche, even exiled parts, which are normally very difficult and painful to look at, uh, because the practice has been so rapidly effective and because, you know, I've been able to integrate this way of approaching our internal being, let's say, our inner space, our, our mind and body, etc. Uh, in this fashion, it's been liberating and, uh, but, but also very enjoyable fun fun yes <laughs> what a concept and easy so fun and easy are you, know, you keep doing it keep doing it so yeah definitely looking forward to putting this way more into practice outside of the four days at the Omega Center, but, but I have no, uh, no doubts that it's doable as we walked around in the same state and interacted with people mm -hmm. still in the space. Yes. The um, ease and naturalness with which it's been able to be accessed and then embodied has been very awesome. It's just been easy and simple and effortless and there's the direct knowing that one is here. Like you're not thinking, 
oh, did I get it that time? Or, you know, felt like something, you know, maybe I was quiet for a moment. It's like, yes, this is it. I know this is it. It's very clear. I mean, it's... I'm right here. Unmistakable. This is who I am, essentially, which is very comforting and uh, loving and safe, peaceful, natural, open, joyful, um, all the limitless, all the qualities are here available. And we could even endeavor to say exciting. I'm excited. Because it is presenting a new level of possibility of freedom. You know, freedom is something that I think is unending. It's like, how free can you be? It's one of the first questions that I asked myself when I started doing the inner work. The deep inner work, <laughs> unraveling the psyche and things. I started to get a little bit of freedom. And I felt it for the first time that I can really remember. I identified feeling freedom. Like, Holy shit, that's what it is. Obviously, that's what it is. I knew it as soon as I felt it. That's freedom. Now, it wasn't like ultimate freedom, you know, supreme realization, but it was a much greater degree of feeling inner freedom. Something had opened, something had released, something had let go, and it was profoundly noticeable. I felt different. So at that point in time, I asked myself, well, if that amount of freedom is possible, just simply by doing some inquiry into my being, what amount of freedom is possible? How much freedom is there? So far, I don't know, but every time I attain to a, let's say a new level of freedom and I'm able to uh, integrate that, it's profound and it's sublime and it's like deeper than before. Yes. So. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, you know, I came into this week, and we've been working together for over three years and done a lot of freedom, freeing, and, uh, you know, I would, by no means that I think I was like, you know, as free as I could get, but I had whew, no idea <laughs> how much was unfree. Yes, well, we've had some whoppers along the way. <laughs> And every time it's kind of like that, it's that same realization. Yeah. So this, yeah, this was, so freeing. I mean, just walking to the car, I had another, you know, thought that I definitely want to work around that I feel is another big piece, you know, these, uh, these parts. big parts seem to have, you know, rattled loose. I'll tell you what, what is um, very noticing, noticeable is, as I said before, like there's excitement, but there isn't urgency. No. There's... <laughs> The sense of urgency, like I need to do this now. I realize that's, uh, well, while it may be necessary on some occasions, and um, so I'm not making it wrong or bad, just largely unnecessary in most situations, but sometimes we get ourselves into a uh, fight or flight just simply by thinking, I need to do this. I need to make this happen. Or it's just that feeling operating under the surface, which is oftentimes like, you might not even be aware of thinking these thoughts, but the feelings they're operating. And so it's agitating us. So a relaxed excitement that is 
spaciously aware, not narrowly focused, not seeking to get, but open to observe and be curious about and investigate what life is presenting as I move towards my vision without a need to force a particular outcome along the way. That feels really good. Yeah, I think the fight or flight is a big thing, right? Like, uh, especially with putting the thinker on a semi-retirement or long-term sabbatical. <laughs> you, uh... Yes. You, know, you typically don't need any of those thoughts. In well... The moment, unless, you know, obviously when there is danger, but most of the time it's not that way, but you're you're constantly thinking of the next move and if it's good or bad or what if it's not and well, what happens then and this and that and well then well, you know next thing you know you're 20 steps ahead worried at every one of them yes and none of them need to be even occurring yes because we can intelligently respond to danger in the moment without thinking in fact Thinking really just gets in the way. So while thinking isn't bad either, for sure, it's definitely necessary. But oftentimes even we've thought about everything and every possible angle and every potential situation already 10 times. And here we are still thinking. And so what if we were to attain to a state or a it's not even a state necessarily, but to enter into freedom from the fear and the anxiety and the stress. Wouldn't it make sense that within that space of freedom, that clear solutions that were otherwise overlooked because of the narrowness of the focus and the intensity of the urgency driving it would have been missed? Yes. It's possible. It is possible. Highly likely, even. So it seems that this is what is available. It seems as though... You know, something I notice is the, the slowness of thought. Even though thought can be really fast, oftentimes when I'm in flow state, I will see where my point is going before I even get there, before I even have realized it myself. And I already know what I'm going to say for the next, like, three sentences. It's maybe just uh, word choice and uh, syntax and things that maybe gets corrected or maybe doesn't. But there's this observing quality that's happening as well that's not really involved um, because the knowingness is already there. The knowingness is much faster than the thought. Once it's known, it can be translated into thought quickly and then expressed. All that takes time, but the knowingness is prior to all of that. Then... Okay, so you can see we were really still feeling the energy of the retreat and, you know, even felt a little bit dazed by all of it. But the point that I was trying to make was that Locke's work has the power to really help us see that knowing doesn't need thought to know. And so we can learn how to actually just put thought kind of on the back burner and operate from a place of knowing, from direct perceptive knowing. And that in doing so, we can alleviate ourselves of a ton of unnecessary burden. We can actually learn to access the deeper levels of our psyche 
and work with them in a very powerful way, in a very effective way. Uh, that's like, you know, does the least amount of impact and stress to the system for the greatest amount of results. So I can't say enough about Locke. He's awesome. His work is great. He's got an app that's available also on your phone. And I'll put a link in the description to get his app too. It's a phenomenal app. Best meditation app out there for sure. Amazing investment as is all of his work. So I highly recommend him. And uh, yeah, check him out. Let me know what you think. What's your experience with Locke? Does this interest you at all? Do um, you have any breakthroughs, any profound aha moments? Does this sound like something you'd be you know, willing to go for? Can you wrap your head around what does it mean to even operate from a state of heart-centered, open-mind awareness? Anyways, those are questions for you to consider. In the meantime, have your...